All right, we're on to our next build. This is the Estus Vagabond uh, skill level two build. And I'm going to be mounting the Apogee pods, booster pods, drop away pods onto this rocket. Uh, definitely gonna be an interesting flight. Uh, I decided to modify the rocket to add a fourth set of fins. So I have four fins evenly spacing everything out, just helps with the uh, center pressure, center of gravity. Uh, of course, we've got our decals here. Uh, still haven't decided whether I'll use them or not. These are water slide decals. Uh, we've got our coupler, our body tube, our uh, upper body tube, lower body tube, nose cone, motor mount tube, uh, launch lug. That's our uh, DDE engine spacer. This is the sleeve for the motor tube, our engine hook, engine block, and our balsa fins, our uh, centering rings, and our parachute. Now the kit comes with a three fin template. I have open rocket and I managed to make a four fin template along with making sure my launch lug is set in there. I'm going to measure the distance between two fins and mark it and that'll give me my pod spacing and then I can just rotate this around to the opposite side and do the same thing to get that pod markings uh, on the body tube. Again, it's a shiny tube. We like to sand shiny tubes with some 220 or other such grit to uh, take the sheen off. It also makes it easier to mark on. It makes it easier for the glue to uh, adhere everything to there. So we're going to sand down all our uh, body tubes. Uh, we've got our engine coupler. I've got a couple of small bags for small parts if I need to be, like launch lugs and uh, little things that like to disappear while you're building. I can slip these inside. Uh, little plastic bag to keep them from uh, vanishing on me while I'm doing my build. And uh, I like to keep these small plastic bags. I've used them over and over and over again. I've got a parachute. So we've got all our parts here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start sanding up tubes. I'll sand up my uh, nose cone, get my nose cone seam taken care of. Um, <coughs> I can actually prime my nose cone ahead of time. Uh, We've got to glue three pieces to make a fin. Three pieces go together uh, to make one fin. So I've got to do all that to make our fin. And it goes together something like that to make a fin. Uh, I don't know if I'll paper this or not. Probably not. I'll probably just go with the standard wood putty and uh, sand fill it and then use uh, just my sander primer and go for broke that way. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get everything sanded and marked up and we'll start putting it together. All right, we're assembling the fins. I already assembled one. Uh, we're gonna do the next one. Now what they recommend is sanding the leading edges round and leaving the root edges square. I'm not gonna sand any of my edges uh, at this time other than to true them up for squaring for the body tube because you have overlaps and if you round it, it's gonna make it harder to glue. So again, we saved our wrapper from earlier and we're gonna line up these pieces and I'm using a square, a speed square to check to make sure everything squares up along that. And I don't, if I have to sand anything to get it level, I can do that. And that all lines up nice and straight on there. So I'll be good. So now we're going to glue it. I'm gonna leave my big piece in place using my wood glue, just getting a little bit on the end of a stick again. And I don't need a whole lot. This is just a, the initial bonding. Just gonna smear it along there. And now I'm going to take it and just slide it right up into place and make sure it seats really well. A little bit of wipe on that extra glue I had there. And again, I'm gonna make sure that it's flat downward. I'm gonna take my back piece and be sure you check your back piece. That little triangle has two different angles on it and if you use the wrong angle, you'll have a big gap. So make sure you double check that you have it laid out the right way. And once I lay something out, when I'm doing the fins, I leave it that way until after I assemble it. So now I'll drop that down. Slide it into place, wipe off the excess, 
make sure everything's seated really well. And there we have our nice straight line. So we'll let that sit for a while to set up. And then we'll do the other two fins. And then I'll have our core fins set up and ready to go. All right, so we're getting ready to assemble the motor tube. Again, we sanded off the, the shine. Uh, I've already marked up the tube for our uh, setup. Our first mark is an inch up, and then we have three and a quarter inches. Uh, we're going to put in our engine hook first. And I drove those circles all the way around like I do with all of them using my angle iron so that I know exactly where to line up my launch rings. It's a really important with your thinner launch rings uh, just because they can get crooked and wobbly on you. So brand new sharp exacto knife. We're going to go in and make our little slit for our motor hook. Make sure we're good and set. And then this is how you don't stab yourself with your exacto knife. You slide it up and then you slip it on. And you're not stabbing yourself in the hand. All right, so now we can mount our engine hook there. And again, I like to stick my finger in the hole so I don't collapse the tube while I'm wiggling that in there. And I've drew a line down the side, so now I have an alignment mark for my uh, motor hook. I pre-sanded everything and I dry fit to make sure there are notches for the motor hook. And I always like to pre-sand and make sure everything fits before I start gluing things up. So those fit really well there. That's a little loose, but that's fine. So now we can start gluing things up. We're going to put our glue on our first ring, and I'm actually going to run the glue right around. And again, it's the white glue because I want to have some play time with it. I'm going to run the glue right on my line. And it's not super heavy. I'm actually not going to smear it either because it's going to make one of my fillets. Okay, so now I can just slide that right up to the glue. A little past, but I can pull back to my mark and I can sit there and dangle it around a little bit until I have it all the way there. Now it says I'm supposed to smear glue all the way around. And then put this ring on there, and that helps hold the uh, retention of the motor hook. So I'm going to put the glue around, and I'm going to smear it all around. Quickly wipe my finger, and then we're going to slide that up, and that's actually going to help put that centering ring straight. So now I have something centered on the centering ring. Now we've got our last centering ring on the end. And we're going to go ahead and put our glue just before the line. All the way around. And then I'm going to slide on, make sure I got the hook, the notch for the engine hook lined up. I'm going to slide to just past my mark all the way around. Okay. Using that pencil mark as my lineup, and we're good. So we're going to let that dry up, and then we're going to insert our block, and that goes all the way up against the hook. Make sure that the hook doesn't allow the engine to escape. I like a little extra reinforcement. Just put that glue in there and wipe the tip off the bottle. Nasty glue mess on our bottle. Smear the glue around just inside the edge of the tube. Get that 
finger, dry our finger. Now I'll insert. I'm going to shove that all the way up against the hook. And that's against the hook. So now we can let it sit there and dry. Uh, line that up. You can kind of roll it back and forth and see if your rings are straight. And that ring is straight, so I'm happy with that. So we're going to let this sit and dry. And I'm going to put a fillet on the other side of each ring. And then we'll be able to bounce, uh, go into our next step. All right, so we're up to marking our body tube now. Uh, this is the lower section. And it comes with a, the template marking guide like they all do. The problem is, is that marking guide is actually set up for a three fin and I've switched this to a four fin plus I'm adding in the pod so I have to make some extra marks. So we want to grab the lower tube, which is the short tube. And that's going to be the one we're marking. We've got the, the shorter tube and we've got the long tube. We want the shorter tube. That's the one we're marking. Get some uh, tape here. I've got tons of tape up here on my lamp post thing. So that's ready. Now, I do need to make an extra mark because I didn't do it with my program. And my fins. are an inch and a quarter apart, so I need to come right there for my pod. So that's going to be a pod. And then the same thing on the other side. I'll actually rotate this around and line up my marks and get my pod on the other side. So. Wrap around the tube, tape it, pull them tight, tape it, garbage on my tape there, just tear off the garbage piece. All right, so now I can mark, and again, I'm using a pencil, I never ever use pen. We'll do a mark for a pod, so we'll put a P next to that. I always put my letters to the right of the line. There's a fin. There's a fin. There's a fin. There's the launch lug, so a nice L. And here's a fin, another F. Now I want to get my pod on the other side. So all I have to do is just rotate my ring around, line up my arrows on two of the existing fins. There we go. I could have marked the template twice, but I want to go this way. Another way of doing it. And then I'm going to check to make sure that I am opposite. There's a pod. That's opposite. So we'll make another mark. And we'll do our P for pod. So by sanding everything, it marks up a lot better. And we can see what we're doing a lot better when we do mark it. Okay. I actually save all my instructions and all my templates for all my rockets. Uh, if I had been cutting this template out of the actual instructions, I would have copied this page and then cut out the instructions. So now I've got that. I need to mark my tube. So I grab my angle iron. It's actually angle aluminum. And We'll just set it right on the line and draw our line up and down. Rotate to the next line and then up and down we go. Next line. Okay. 
rotate around. Uh, you have the Estes fin marker. It's basically the same thing. It's made out of plastic. Uh, this doesn't have to be long, even for your longer rockets. Uh, you can just scoot it up because it self-centers on the tube. You scoot it up the tube and line it back up with the line and just continue marking it. Uh, when I do my large rockets that I do dual deploy on, I have to be able to mark all the way up uh, because I like aligning my pop rivets and shear pins with my fins. If I've got four fins, four rivets, or three fins, three rivets, however it is, I always like to line everything up so I can carry that line all the way up to the top of the body tube and everything lines up pretty. All right, so we've got everything marked and we're ready to start getting some fins glued on here. Uh, I think we're going to be papering our fins. So when we paper the fins, it's going to give some strength to them. Uh, and we won't have to worry about these pieces popping as much. It'll be a little bit easier to finish it uh, versus um, sanding sealer or a lot of dope. Uh, I could start doing it right now just by uh, spraying it with primer and then uh, sanding it a lot and filling it that way. Uh, there's hundreds of different ways to do it. I like paper because it, it strengthens it and you use just regular paper. Uh, there is a video out there that I did that shows how to do it. Uh, I'm still not sure. I want the fins to dry overnight a little bit more before I actually do start mounting them. We have to let the motor mount dry overnight and uh, we'll be able to start doing all that tomorrow. So on the motor mount, it sat overnight. We did uh, some nice glue fillets and let those dry thoroughly. So we have glue fillets on the top and bottom of each ring. Now I want to reinforce the opening where the motor is going to be constantly put in and out. As you can probably guess, it's going to wear out the end of your tubes. You may already have a few that are worn out. This is how I prevent most of that from happening. Thin CA glue, and we're just going to stick it in there and you can see just a minute and I'm going in about a quarter of an inch and I'm coating the tube all the way around the inside you can see that dark ring now we're going to wipe lightly real quick before too much dries we want to give it a chance to soak in a little bit but then we're going to wipe out excess do it quickly so you don't glue your rag to your tube now we're going to let that dry up and after that dries up I can take a wooden dowel of sandpaper or I can put sandpaper around my finger and I can stick it in there and I just lightly burnish this edge and it, it will be nice and smooth for motors to slide in and out without any problem and it'll be a lot stronger than just the plain tube by itself because the super glue will harden up and give it some strength. So it's a great way of uh, increasing the length and the time that this motor mount assembly on the end is going to stay nice and pretty without getting those little dimples and push-ins and, and dents on it. So now we're up to the part where we're going to insert our motor mount tube into our smaller uh, thin can or thin section. First of all, dry fit. Make sure everything slides in there nice. If not, use sandpaper. Uh, sometimes just sanding the very edge of this will take any burr off from when they uh, made it. Sometimes you have to sand your rings. Second thing, remember we have multiple fins, plus pods, plus the launch lug, so we have to find out where we're going to put our motor hook. Normally I would make my motor hook space off to the side, but I only have one area where I don't have anything being mounted in a field. I don't want to line up my motor hook with a fin, because then it makes it hard to get to your motor hook. We have pods. I don't want to line up with a pod. don't want to line up with a launch lug, because that puts it up against the launch rod possibly we don't want to have that problem so this one's actually going to face to the forward part of the rocket now we're going to make it a flush mount which means it's going to line up dead center with the uh, flush with the uh, back of the motor a couple of ways you can do that uh, you can have a piece of wood that once you uh, get it in you can slide it up and that'll sink it right to where you want it so that's uh, one way of doing it. Now we're going to put our glue in there. And we have to kind of look and figure out where we're going to put the glue. So that's going to be up there a good distance. I want to get up there with the glue and smear it around. 
slide this in a little bit and then get the rest of my glue on this end and push it the rest of the way in. So again, I want to use white glue because it gives me more time to move this around and I'm kind of eyeballing it. Uh, if you need to, you can mark a wooden dowel to help you figure out exactly how far you need to have this in there. So I'm going to glue that out. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to use my finger inside the tube. I'm going to smear that around. And I'm going to make sure there's no excess glue anywhere where I'm going to start the insertion of the motor mount tube. I'm going to glue it with my hand. Just barely get it in there. I'm going to put the glue around the outside. Just rotate. Ooh, we're kind of coming out here. Slide you back in a little bit. Okay, we don't have too much time to play around with this, and I need to get it done. Okay. Now we'll line up again with our where we want our motor tube. We're going to insert. And that glue is going to smear as it goes in on the bottom one, so it smears it all the way up in further. So now we've got naturally a glue ring on the inside, on the top and bottom. I will add another glue ring to this end to reinforce that. So we're going to set this off to dry in an upright position so that the glue doesn't huddle to one side or the other. If I were to set this down on its side, all the glue is going to run to that side on the inside part and on the, uh, the part here and part here and then we'd have a glue puddle on the, uh, it would cause a, a weight imbalance so we're going to make sure that this dries in an upright position and then we'll get to, uh, to a point where we can start putting our fins on alright so we're to uh, skinning the fins on the Vegabond now uh, when I skin fins I like to use just regular uh, thin printer paper. It doesn't really need to be super thick. Uh, too thick and it actually causes problems. Too thin and it causes just as many problems. So just a standard weight uh, uh, copy paper or uh, printer paper. So I'll take and I'll drop the fins on the paper and I'll trace around them. Now I'm not tracing right up on top of the, the lines. I'm just getting them kind of close. <coughs> Excuse me. All I'm trying to do is just get the general outline because I'm going to be putting this paper on top of the fin and adhering it to it, so I want it to be close, but I don't want it to be super close. Other things I'm going to need, I'm going to need some different types of scissors. I have a, a pair of iris scissors. Uh, these are very fine cutting scissors. They're really good for trimming up close. Uh, I've got some larger scissors for uh, cutting some bulk stuff. I've bought two or three different sizes of these types, which is really good. We've got the uh, white glue. We've got our little squeegee thing that I like to use and that helps me squeegee the paper down tight. Uh, we've got a wet rag and a dry rag. A wet rag so I can wipe the glue off my fingers, the dry rag so I can wipe the water off my fingers. <laughs> a little dusty in here because I just got done uh, sanding. We do sand the fins and we want to try and get it uh, relatively smooth, especially like where we have joints. This is a three-piece fin. I want to get my joints smooth because once I have the paper down, I'm not going to be able to smooth that over, and that joint will show through even more so than if I didn't. All right, so we're going to put some glue down, and a lot of this glue is going to come right back off. Oh, by the way, you need to have something heavy to put on top of these after you do them because uh, if you don't, it's going to warp and go crazy. Even though we're not really leaving a whole lot of glue on, there's enough that it would warp and cause issues if you did not have weight on it. So we're going to put a bead of glue all the way around it. And now I'm going to smear this glue all over. And you can see I have a piece of plastic on my workbench so I don't get glue all over my workbench. The larger the fan, the harder it is. just because you're dealing with sheer size. Uh, I started doing this when I built my Aspire for mock speed. Okay, so now I've got it coated all the way around. Now I actually want to take and I want to wipe as much of that glue right back off as I can. This, we're having the rags, comes in very handy. So I'm wiping that off very quickly as much of this glue as I can. 
too much glue will make it very hard to, to get everything to adhere on there right. So once we do that, we're going to quickly take our piece of paper, we're going to lay it right on top, and we're going to get it on there. Then we're going to take our squeegee, we're kind of squeegeeing it all around. This will help force out any air bubbles, extra glue, anything like that. And you can see I'm going multiple directions every time I pass. Okay. Now I always like to take my finger and run along the edge all the way around. And it's kind of like burnishing your edge. It's getting any glue on the edge to grab the paper and that paper is going to give you a nice edge to sand later on. Okay, now we're going to quickly flip this over to the other side. If you have any glue on your plastic bag, wipe it off real quick. That's another nice thing about the plastic is it wipes very quickly. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And you don't have to work super, super fast, but you do want to make sure that you get this done as quickly as possible. Because obviously glue starts to dry and you could end up with a warped fin if you're not careful. And it's a little easier to smear this side because you got the paper to hold on to. So we're gonna smear. This is actually about a three or four part step kind of thing. Okay, now we're going to wipe off all that extra glue we can. Too much glue, you end up with wet paper that wrinkles when you try and squeegee it. And it just doesn't work out too well. You wipe off too much glue and you can't get the paper to stick. Okay, we're going to throw our next piece of paper down. Again, lightly with our hands, trying to get the bulk of everything done. I'm going to take our little squeegee. And I'm squeegeeing the rest of the glue out. I'm not really pushing super, super hard. I'm just trying to make sure that I smooth things out. And then again, you can go over it with your fingers and then burnish that edge. And now that the paper is wet, it's going to kind of hold that edge there. And later on, you'll see where that having that edge is kind of nice. And we can make sure everything's nice and smooth. Push down with a, a sharp edge, it will cut into it, and you'll end up with that in your fin design. Now you can see where I quite, didn't quite get a smooth there. Make sure the other side's good. Now we move this over to our drying area. And you want your drying area to be flat, smooth, and a heavy object on top of it. I've got a, a nice little metal box that holds ball bearings and all of my uh, rocket pop parts, and it's metal, so it's heavy, and it keeps everything nice and flat. So we did that to the one fin. We're going to do all three fins. They're going to dry overnight, and then tomorrow we'll take we'll trim the extra paper off, and that's where you'll see me use the, the iris scissors and my larger scissors to trim off the paint. We're gonna super glue, with thin super glue, or CA glue, the edges, not the root edge, but all the leading and trailing edges and the tip edges. And that will stiffen up that edge so it doesn't peel away later on, because we've trimmed it close, and it also gives you the ability to sand the edge and make it look nice and pretty. So we'll get all that done tomorrow, and then we'll be able to apply these to the rocket. So the fins have had a chance to dry thoroughly, and uh, again, these were kept under a couple of books. Uh, remember, if there's a texture on whatever you're pressing them with or what they're laying on, it's going to pick up that texture because it's wet from the glue, so uh, make sure you put it on something smooth. So now we're going to trim off all this excess paper from around the fins. And it's real easy to do. You can uh, use large scissors for a good portion of it. And we're just going to cut off the excess. I'm not trying to get too awfully perfect with my cuts, just close to, to what I want to get off. 
And this is where those other scissors come into to play. I have three and four different sizes of scissors so that I have the ability to get more accurate, closer cuts as I work my way around these. section here. All right. So now I can take my iris scissors. And these are the small little scissors like this. I can get right up to the edge. I can actually get underneath the paper and up to the edge. I'm trying to be very careful not to cut the balsa wood. But I want to get as much of this paper off as I can. And I might hit some glue balls or little bits of glue here and there. And that's not going to be a worry. We'll get around all that later. As you can tell, I can get really close to that, that edge there. That's exactly what I want to do. Some people uh, like to use an exacto knife for this. I think it's too easy to mess up with an exacto, so I like using the scissors. And again, if you hit a blob of glue somewhere, just cut around the blob of glue. We'll be able to sand the glue off later. And we, this does not have to be perfect. You're just trying to get close to the edge. You actually don't want to disturb the edge where it's glued on to the uh, balsa wood because that would uh, make it harder to keep it adhered. This is the same method I use when I airfoil, but I actually do the airfoil sanding before I paper the fins. And we're going to do the root edge. This will increase the strength of the fins quite a bit, and it's the main reason I do it, especially if I have large fins. Uh, it's a little harder to do when you have multiple section fins like this, has three different parts because you have to get your seams smooth. I can see a little bit of a pop through there where the seams are, but that'll small enough that it's, it's gonna cover up with the, the primer and the sanding that I do. Okay, so now that I've got this trimmed up that much, uh, paper towel or a cloth towel and your thin CA glue again. So I want to do every edge except the root edge. I do not want to do this on the root edge. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I just put a light trail right along the edge. And then I'm going to wipe it off and leave. I'm just letting it soak into the paper a little bit. And what this is doing is this giving you a stiff edge that's going to make it sandable without fuzzing. 
and it's going to adhere this edge a lot stronger to the balsa wood so it's not going to peel up with speed. Again, I did this on my Apogee Aspire, and that rocket goes up to Mach. So you don't have the problem with the fin peeling the paper off. Flip it over, we're going to do the other side the exact same way. And yes, there is a lot of excess still here, but that excess will get sanded off. This is making it hard so that it, it's actually easier to sand it off. It's strengthening that front edge and trailing edge and tip edge. Some people do the whole fin. I think that's a little bit unnecessary. It's a lot of glue to use on a small thing. It really only needs just a little bit. So now we're going to set this somewhere where it can dry without touching anything. Make sure that the, the CA has plenty of time to dry. Then we can sand the root edge just by putting sandpaper flat on the ground and that'll sand off all this fuzz on the bottom. Then we can sand and round over our edges a little bit with sandpaper by hand on all the other edges and it works out really really well. So we're going to do the other four and then we'll be ready to start mounting them on the rocket. Alright so we've basically gone from trimming with the iris scissors to where we have a, a very rough edge uh, all the way around to putting on CA glue and you can see the the glue line all the way along here and that's the CA glue and then we sand it and you can see how nice and pretty this edge now looks now that we've sanded it and we have a nice flat root edge and everything's ready to go uh, I've checked to make sure that using a, a square or something that you know is, is definitely flat you can sit there and, and check to make sure that your root edge is, is perfectly flat so now we're to a point where we'll do the rest of the fins and then we'll be ready to assemble them onto the body so we've uh, let the glue the CA glue set up a little bit and we're ready to sand this off now and this will get rid of all that little burr paper a little bit of excess paper that's on there and it'll clean up our root edge so for the root edge obviously just take a piece of sandpaper and we'll keep it as level as possible and go back and forth and you'll see it kind of frays up on the end that's fine we're just trying to get our root edge square and flat and then to take off that little bit on the side you can just take your sandpaper and just at a slight angle. I'm not even really using much pressure. I'm just barely going along. And I kind of folded it over so now it's on the bottom again. And I can go back and forth on my block again and look and see what I need to adjust a little bit on the back side here and you just want to go a little bit at a time until you achieve the edge you want a little bit more on the front And now you can see how we've removed all the excess paper along the root edge. And that's the hardest edge to do because you didn't use any CA. Uh, a little bit of fuzz on the edge isn't going to matter too much because you're going to cover that with whatever you use for your fillet material. Now the rest of them, you just sand it like you normally would. And it's actually going to sand all that off. 
as you go along. This peeper's in a little bit better shape. And we're just going to keep sanding until we achieve the rounded edge that we want. And you can see that it's actually removing the, the paper as we sand. The hard parts are going to be where your inside corners are. Just like if you were sanding a normal thin. Again, I wasn't too worried about aerodynamics on this rocket, so I didn't pre-round my corners. You can pre-round and then paper. Uh, if you want to airfoil, you can airfoil and then paper. It's all in the, uh, the preference you want. I wasn't too worried about the aesthetics of a, a nice pretty airfoil, so I went ahead and just papered it. Here on this side, and it takes a little bit of work, but I think the strength that it gives to the fins is, is really worth it. Um, so we'll continue sanding all the way around, and once we're done sanding, uh, we can set it aside and grab the next fin. So we've got all our fin and just sand it uh, again, nice and flat and smooth on the bottom. And then uh, we've got a little bit of a taper on the sides all the way around. So now we're ready to attach to the body tube. So I'm going to pull out my little body tube block that I use for uh, mounting fins and everything else. It's perfect. The carpet helps keep everything from messing it up. We've got our body tube that we've already marked out. And Remember, I mark everything to the right of the line, so we have a fin, launch load, fin, pod, fin, nice little blank spot, that's the front of the rocket, then the fin, pod, back to the fin. So we're going to start with our first fin, I'm going to line it up, and I'm going to be using the Elmer's Carpenter Glue, Wood Carpenter Glue. Uh, this bottle's actually got a little bit of age on it, so it's a little bit thicker than what uh, normally comes out, but that's okay. What I just do is I just dab it. Actually, it's loosened up enough I can actually use the applicator now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit on our leading edge of our fin. And I'm going to set my clock on the stopwatch. So now I've got my stopwatch. What we're going to do is we're going to pop this open a little tight there we go and I'm going to put a bead of glue right along the edge I'm just get the right page here And again, I'm verifying we're going to be mounting the tail right even with the back of the uh, rocket. So first of all, we're going to get that bead of glue on there. And again, I've got a towel to wipe my finger off on. There we go. So just a nice, easy bead. And I'm going to be spreading this out. And I'm not doing a whole lot because a lot would squish out. We don't want to squish out glue. We want to get the glue on there and get it to adhere. So now I've got that bead. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to spread that bead out by tapping on it. And it's going to help thin it across. And make sure we have good contact everywhere. Any excess that went anywhere I'm going to wipe off with my towel. Wipe from the fin up and switch surfaces. That way we don't get glue all over everything. I'm going to hit my stop clock. Now I'm going to let one minute go by. And I'm going to tap it in a couple places it didn't quite cover. 
And again, this is where having a wet towel and a dry towel pays off and wonderfully. <clears throat> so I'm going to line up dead in the back flush with our back in here. And then we'll lay it down, we'll turn it around, and we're going to line it up straight. And I'm going to actually use this to help line it up straight. Something else that helps when you're doing that is you can take and mark your opposite areas on your fins. So I'm bounce that right there. And all you would do is you'd come in and you'd see where your fin is and you do a mark on the inside of the tube. Just like this. need to darken it up you can darken it up but now I have something that I can set this and I can line up my fin with the line on the back all right we've got a minute past a little bit more than a minute we'll apply the fin and again we'll find our fin mark F is to the right so this is the fin we're going to set her on there we're going to make sure she's right on the back and line her up on the line. Give her a good press down. Now we're going to come around here. We're going to try to make sure we get everything lined up nice and pretty. Now I can take my framing square and I can say, okay, is that square? Do I need to move or rotate? And So now we're going to let that sit there and dry, and I can keep eyeballing it to make sure it's straight. Uh, the camera's kind of off at an angle, so it looks odd to you. That lines up with the mark underneath. And everything lines up pretty straight. So we look good just like that. And everything is going to have to look even and equal all the way around. That's the important thing. So now we're going to let that sit there and set up, uh, you know, five, ten minutes. And once it's uh, got a good grip on there, we can rotate it. Uh, I like to go 180 degrees and go to the other side and mount the opposite fin. And I just hang it off the edge of the table to be able to do that. And I go and do the side. It keeps everything balanced so it doesn't roll funny. And I can actually look at my fins and make sure that they're square to each other and lined up really, really well when I do that. So we'll get the other fins on and uh, then we'll come back. Our <clears throat> coupler into the tube. I'm doing the upper half first. We've got the fins on the lower half, and I'm going to let those dry thoroughly before I uh, couple it to the uh, upper tube. So you can see where I did mark for our launch lug and our two pods on this tube already. I have to make sure that those line up when I attach it to the lower section. So we're going to take and we're going to smear glue on the inside. We're going to make sure there's no burrs. Uh, do the dry fit. Should slide in fairly easy without having to wiggle or jiggle it too much. Remember, the glue is going to make it tighter to get it in there, so we're going to make sure it's all the way in there. We'll just use regular white glue again because I need to have the time for it to slide in and out. So I'm going to take and I'm going to insert the glue on the edge, and I'm going to roll it around. I'm going to get the glue all over the end. And I'm going to smear it almost the full distance. It's a three-inch coupler, so I'm going to go an inch and a half inside. And once it's smeared, I'm going to insert coupler up to the line that I drew at the inch and a half mark all the way around. So I took the coupler and I marked it at an inch and a half and then using my angle iron drew a circle all the way around it so I know exactly where to stop and I got it right up to that line. And Now we're going to turn it straight up and down so that the glue can dry thoroughly and not pool to one side or the other. I stick my finger up in here wipe out the excess glue and then we're going to put it vertical so that the glue doesn't pull because again if it's laying like this any glue that's excess will dribble down to that side and give us an unbalanced rocket so we're going to leave that like that while it dries interesting view down at the body tube and once that's dried we'll meet it to the uh, 
pin assembly. And again, we can see here, looking on the pin assembly, I can line it up on my uh, marks here. And we've got them almost perfect all the way around. So that's almost perfect on all the lines for my four pin assembly all the way around. So that's pretty good for eyeballing it. So we're gonna give everything a chance to dry and then we're gonna uh, connect our two pieces and we'll get our pod mounts on shortly after that. So our parts have had a few hours to dry. The glue is all nice and dry now. So we're gonna insert our upper por portion body tube into our lower portion body tube. Again, we're gonna make sure all our alignment marks match up. So I'm gonna put it on, there's my launch leg line. That matches up, pod line matches up, pod line matches up. So I wanna make sure I keep all my alignments together. So open up the glue. And again, using just regular white glue because I do wanna be able to uh, move this around. I'm just putting it just inside the lip. And it's a healthy bead of glue. All the way around. Here you can kind of sort of see it's a healthy bead of glue. Close my glue up, wipe the lid off. Now I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to smear that around. I want it to come all the way to the front edge and go back into the tube. I don't have to push it back too far because as I slide the, the coupler in there, it's going to spread it out. But I want to try and make the coat fairly even inside. Okay, we'll wipe off our finger again. Now, I've got to make sure I line everything up. Glue's all off my hand. So we have our launch lug. We have our launch lug line there. So we're going to slide everything together quickly. Give it a little turn to line it up, and all our lines match. So again, to keep the glue from pooling to one side, we're going to let this stand uh, vertical long enough for the glue to all set up and dry nice and pretty so that we don't have glue drips uh, all pooled to one side and side. So now we're going to let that dry and then we'll be ready to uh, start putting the pod uh, latches on. So we're going to mount the launch lug now. Uh, it comes in two inches. You cut it uh, in half so you have an inch each. I'm going to use my yellow glue again on this because I want something that's going to grab quickly and not sag and slough. Um, the first one's going to go right on the tail, flush and even. The second one's going to go flush even between the two stages. So I'm going to get a little bit of glue on the lug. And again, just dabbing a little bit. Don't need to get ridiculously crazy with the amount of glue because we will be adding fillets on after the fact. Okay, and now we're going to line it up on our line. Make sure we're on the bottom. Straight. Looks good there. And if you have troubles getting launch lugs on right, you can always take part of your launch rod, if you have a two-piece launch rod, and use it to hold it in place while the glue dries. Uh, just by running it through the launch lugs, glue, glue them in, run it through the launch lugs, and then tape it in place while the launch lugs dry. Okay. And we're gonna line it right with that line there. I'm eyeballing this. Looks pretty good. You can get a quick verification just by taping a launch rod. Okay, the right size. And then we can gently run it up there. Believe me, I generally don't have any problems with it, so I'm just going to go ahead and line it on there and eyeball I normally don't have any problems with it staying in place. We're going to let that glue set up really good. 
you actually need to put some tape on these before you start running the uh, mantra up through. Okay, that looks good. So now we're going to let all this dry up and we'll get uh, all our fillets on everything. We're going to do fillets on one side and the launch lugs and we'll flip it over and do the other side and just keep rotating until we get them all done. So we're down to the last little bit of our assembly of the uh, Estes Ventress, Ventress modified to a four fin configuration to accept our two strap on boosters from Apogee. Uh, I still haven't decided whether I'm going to paint the nose cones or just leave them as is. It's not that big of a deal to come back and paint them if I don't want, like the way it looks right now. Everything else is painted. We've got all our uh, roll patterns on our rocket all done right here. Uh, I might go back and paint these by hand with uh, some gloss black. We've got our fins all done right here. That's what I like about papered fins is it's actually pretty easy to get them to look very, very smooth. Uh, I didn't spend as much time on these as I could have. But uh, filling in the grain with paper is really easy because the paper does it for you. Now, one thing you didn't see me do, I don't use the uh, shock cords that come with the kits. I don't believe in rubber bands and rockets. Uh, those things degrade over time and eventually they will fail. So what I do is I use Kevlar string and I make it four to five lengths of the rocket. So if it's a 12-inch rocket, you do four lengths of 12 or five lengths of 12, et cetera, et cetera, depending on the length of the rocket. That way you've got distance for the velocity of the uh, ejection charge to slow down before it reaches the end and it doesn't rip your rocket or your parachute. So how do we anchor it in there? You can anchor it the same way that you anchor your rubber band one, but I would suggest using uh, epoxy. What I'll do is I'll actually tie a knot in the string. You can't see me do it it's just too hard to see when i do it but i'll tie a knot in the string and i'll tack it way back in there with a little bit of super glue a little bit of ca glue just a dot and then i'll put uh, epoxy over the top and i'll put a piece of paper on that epoxy and i'll push it to smooth it down if i need to i can take my uh, sandpaper stick and i can go in there and sand any rough edges down because remember we have a plastic parachute we don't want it to catch it that and get tore out and then that's in there that's never going to come out uh, you'll rip the body tube apart before that will ever bust or come out. Uh, attaching it to the nose cone, same way we did the other ones. We're going to throw a couple of loops on there, uh, a couple of hitches, and then we'll put a dab of uh, a cement CA glue on it to uh, hold it in place. And then I'll mount my parachute with a large locking this has a, a couple little latches to keep it from popping open. There's no way in the world this is going to pop open. I'll use that for my parachute, and I'll actually put a loop in the string about uh, 10 inches from the nose cone. And that way I know that the nose cone will pull the chute out, and it'll give it a chance to open up and hopefully not foul up in the rocket or in the shock cord. And let's take a couple more loops. Cinch it down. Got a little drop of CA on that. Again, this is the thin CA. And that will just lock that knot forever. And one drop, two drops. That lock knot is now locked forever. Never coming loose. Uh, we all know how to put together parachutes and all that, so I'll save all the boredom of that. And uh, we'll tie a knot probably right about here for our parachute. Just a straight over throw. And there we go, we have a knot for our parachute. Uh, we can actually tie directly to that or use the clip like I, uh, I do. So uh, we've got our build done. Uh, we're ready to fly this, hopefully uh, going up on uh, tax relief this year uh, at uh, 60 acres in April. So we'll tag that video onto the end of this video uh, or just uh, tag the link into the video later date. So uh, happy flying.